Hey everyone, Cody here, and today we'll be doing a dabbed painting with uh, this weird greenish uh, blue. It's called Deep Ocean, but it's actually more greener than I thought it was when I opened it up. I forgot I haven't used it in a little bit. But anyway, uh, we got a almost like a regular blue, I guess you would call it like just normal blue. Uh, bright red, and then a gold, and we're going to be doing a dab painting with these. So I'm going to mix these up. Apologize I didn't have them done before the video, but I'll get them mixed up here. But today I kind of wanted to talk about something that I feel is important, especially as an artist, and that's having patience. You know, art is an interesting thing because it's easy to, to mess it up, I guess, um, or to want the result of, you know, the finished piece without waiting. And I've ruined many paintings because I didn't want to wait for a layer to dry or I didn't want to wait for the right colors so I just used certain colors and you know I was going for a certain look and it just didn't turn out or you know whatever um, but my point is is you know it takes a lot of patience to to kind of you know get a painting or you know a piece of artwork right but on top of that not just in the the micro of the pieces themselves but in the macro as well and what I mean by that is kind of the overall arching theme of of art. You know, I don't know if you make art just because you have a hobby or you want to make art to sell or whatever it is. Sometimes the process can be kind of frustrating, right? It can be kind of tedious and, you know, sometimes even for me, it makes me want to give up. Um, you know, I sell, I do my paintings as a hobby, but I do sell them. And even not doing this full time because I have a job, sometimes it's frustrating. It's frustrating when, you know, you go a few months without sales or, you know, when somebody wants a painting, but they don't want to pay full price. They just want to give you, you know, 50 bucks or something. And it depends on the size of the painting, right? But the point of that is that, you know, sometimes things just don't go the way that you want them to. And I think that that actually happens quite a bit. It's kind of like this channel. You know, I've had this channel for a while. I've been posting videos of painting for over two years, but really hitting it hard this year. And I've gained some traction, but not a lot. And at points, it's frustrating because, you know, it's like you think that you're putting in the work... And maybe you are putting in the work. Maybe you're putting in, you know, the effort in the paintings or whatever it is that you're trying to do. Almost spilled it if you didn't see that. Um, and maybe you are putting in that work. Maybe you're putting in that effort. But maybe it just hasn't been enough time. And I find that we all kind of deal with this in one thing or another. And I, I think it's a big reason why a lot of people have debt or credit because... They want to buy things that they can't afford now. But I won't get into all that. Um, I guess the whole point out of this is patience isn't something that you just have. It's something you learn. And going through these paintings and painting over the last couple of years has really kind of taught me that lesson. I ruined a lot of paintings because I was rushing the paintings. And I've also kind of made snap decisions in you know the, the painting I want to say side hustle because I, I sell them sometimes, but not as a business. So I've made snap decisions where, you know, I just gave in and sold a painting really cheap when later on I found out that somebody would have bought it full price just because I just wanted to get rid of it, right? So it's like I wasn't patient enough to wait for a result. Now, I'm not saying that you can't give them away or sell them. I do that um, or sell them under price, I should say. But my point is, is that you just... Patience is a, something you have to develop, and you really have to kind of start looking, you know, long term as opposed to short term, you know. And again, that's something I've had to do with this channel. And so, really, I just kind of wanted to touch on that and, and just throw that out as a reminder that these things take time. I mean, you know, we always look at people and think like they're an overnight success, but you know, there's quotes out there that say, you know, it took me 12 years to become an overnight success. A lot of people don't become an overnight success. We just see that instant where they just kind of took off. But really, there's probably, 
years behind it almost every single time. And the very few exceptions where someone just took off and they didn't have, you know, that buildup, those are the very rare exceptions. And they're the exceptions to the rule, not the rule itself. So ultimately, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. If you ever feel like things are just not happening, yeah, that's that's most things. And most things that are worth while or take a lot of effort over an extended period of time can be the worthwhile things if everything was easy and everything came super quick then it wouldn't be worth it so these are generally the things that we do get right away or you know we put very little effort into and see the the results are not worth it for one reason or another so anyway i will get off of that let's go ahead and get to the painting now i'm gonna be honest I don't know how this color is going to do with these three colors. I already know these three colors are great together. Um, I have a painting called Convert. No, they vanish. And it was these three colors, but then also a dark blue. I thought this was similar to the dark blue, but now I'm realizing it's more of a kind of a teal or dark turquoise or something. So, you know, we're going to go with it anyway. So let's go ahead and jump in. So we're going to put our little puddles here. We'll always kind of start in the same pattern. I don't know why. It's just natural, but I've come to accept it, and I like I like what I do. So we're gonna put our little our little puddles here, and then we'll move into the gold. There's some gold there. That was quite a bit. So we'll put there, and then just a little hint over here, because I want I want that gold to kind of mix in with that green. So the gold and green are great. The gold and the red look good, and the the gold with the blue is okay. Um, so we're gonna try to, you know, really kind of get that to pop. And I think that it's probably not enough paint, but it's okay, we can add more if we need to. So let's go ahead and start, you know, kind of pulling these colors out. And we're gonna just dip it in and pull it and just see what happens. So we're just gonna keep overlapping these colors to kind of mix them up. And we're really kind of crushing the paint down because we want the we want the paint when we push it down, we want that paint to spread out. So we want it kind of flat, you know what I mean, to to really fill in the space. So I am pushing down all the way and then lifting up. And that's kind of where these oh, that's kind of where these uh little fiery looking designs come from the almost like the fire waves i don't know what you would call them but that's where they come from just as a heads up all right so we actually don't have enough paint and if i just keep going over the same ones they're going to start to mix together so what we need to do is stop what we're doing and you know what i really do like this color in here i'm not gonna lie not gonna lie all right, so we're gonna fill in some of these gaps with a little bit of color, just a just a tad. We'll do a little blue there, and I think I'll do a little there. And then we'll do some red, because you know what, we've already got a little bit of red there, a little bit of red there, and let's go ahead and do some there and there. I think we should have plenty of paint now. We really don't want it to pull if, necess if possible. So then we'll go ahead and um, apparently just drop that on that and we'll just pull these colors through we're going to try to cover this whole painting we're going to try to get rid of that little worm looking thing I'm going to pull some more gold in there because can't go wrong with gold right it's a good color good solid color and we'll push this red into that gap there we'll pull some of that color out We'll fill in some of these gaps here. We've got a lot of loose blue up there, so we'll kind of move that out. All right, and we'll take some of that so it doesn't pull. We've got that turquoise right here. We're gonna pull that out. We're gonna use some of this red that we've got and this gold here. Looks like we're almost done here. We're just gonna use the tippy tip corner. Tippy tip corner, I don't even know what, I don't know what that is. So we're gonna pull that out. And 
and you can kind of see the uh, the lines. I don't really want the lines of the, the edges of this, but sometimes when you push down at an angle, it creates those corners almost. I don't want that. So we're gonna go ahead and take some of this and we're just gonna look for any empty spots. There's one right there, so I'm just gonna tap that and fill in this little gap here. Just use our finger because we can kind of dip it into some of the paint here and just kind of fill in these little gaps, which I think look pretty good. Drop that, drop that, drop that, drop that. Now, one interesting thing is that I taped this piece of paper over the cardboard of the, it seems to be working pretty decently. I'm done, by the way. Um, taping the paper over the cardboard back of the, the pad that it comes in actually seems to help pretty well because it gives it like a, a solid background, but it's not so solid that I can't, you know, work with it. And another kind of nice thing is that it's actually pushing the paint, it's pushing the paper up, so it's pulling less because it's, it's pushing up underneath. I don't know if air just gets trapped under it, but it's actually pushing the paint out instead of having the paint pull in, which is great because I don't like it when it pulls in. Um, I don't like to have the big pools of paint. Sometimes it happens and that's just kind of the way that it goes, but I don't like it if I can avoid it. So, we're solid. Looks like we got everything. Oh, ooh, it tried to escape me. I think we're good. Nope, we were not. Okay, well last time, we could do this. We could do this. We are good. No. Dang it. Just when I thought I was good. Okay. Take a little bit of paint just to make sure we got it. Okay. So we're good. We're solid. And uh, I thought we were. Okay. There was a little bit of white at the corner. Now, once I tear the paper or the the tape off, it's not gonna matter a whole lot. And once it's framed, it'll kind of cover it. Now, one thing I have to say is that I have to pull this tape kind of slowly, but not only that, I have to like pull it at an angle because the you, you can see it, the masking tape tends to kind of rip the paper a little bit. So I found that if I pull it sideways, like if I pull it, away from the piece even if it rips a little bit it doesn't like tear the big sections off so you really can't tell that it was ripped and again this would go in a frame with a mat so you wouldn't even see you wouldn't even see that anyway so it's really not that big a deal also i've noticed uh so this paper just so you know this the size is 12 by 18 Apparently that's not a common size for a frame. Um, or even if you can, I have found frames for it, but it's really hard to find a mat for that size frame. It's really, I guess it's not a common size uh, for mats and frames. So just as a heads up, I, uh, I found that out because I was trying to frame a painting and I could not find a mat for it. Um, so what I, what I did do for one painting that was this size is I bought a frame that was for a image that was 13 by 11 or sorry it was 13 by 19 or something it was it was like a slightly larger size than this than the paper so what I did was I just got that frame that was just slightly bigger than this type of paper. And then I just put uh, a piece of cardboard in the back of the frame so that it put pressure on the piece so it didn't move. And then that frame, and then I framed, or I matted it down so it went from like 
13 by 19 down to 11 by 17 or 16 or something like that. So it, it worked because the frame was slightly larger than the actual painting, but with the pressure on the back of the painting with the extra cardboard, it didn't move or anything. So it, it looked it looked nice. So just, you know, trying to overcome common problems. And we got it. Cool. We did not, you know, rip the paper in any major way today. It's great. See, and this is what I was talking about with patience. A lot of times I've actually ruined the painting because I ripped the paper off so fast. Patience. Gotta have patience. Better, better to go slow and get it right the first time, right? So, here's the finished piece. Hard to see because of the light, but I do really like this piece, actually. Uh, so let's go ahead and kind of get some close-ups of the the swirls. Look at that. I love those little swirls and almost like petal looking things. You can see like the little flames and some of the veins coming out of it. I don't this technique is just cool because it creates these really dynamic paintings that just tend to have a lot of movement. So I'm gonna stand back real quick, take a picture so I can have a thumbnail. There we go. All right, and let's see if I can get it from this angle so you can kind of see the little pools, like how many puddles of color there are. Really turned out pretty good, actually. So I'm surprised. I didn't think that this bluish green would actually look good in there, but, uh, but yeah, turned out pretty good. So anyways, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.